We'll turn now to the day's business news with Stephen. Good morning. Hello, Catherine. And you're going to start us off on the currency markets. The euro hitting another low against the dollar. Yeah, that's right. So we've seen in early trading in Asia today, the euro fell to a 12-year low against the dollar at about one dollar and four and a half cents. Now it's come back up slightly since that position earlier. You can see trading now for just over one dollar and five cents uh, in trading today. But again, we've seen this is kind of continuing this fall of the euro that we've seen in recent weeks, largely linked to the bond buying program launched by the European. Central Central Bank that has made the euro that much weaker. Uh, let's move on to have a look at what's happening on the stock markets next. Here in Europe, it's been a largely positive start uh, to the trading days. You can see all the main European markets opening up. The big story moving the markets today is the dispute between the cement makers Lafarge and Halsam over their merger. Lafarge down 4% in Paris uh, and Halsam shares down by over 1%. We'll have more on that story in just a moment. While over in Asia, uh, Chinese shares getting a big boost from comments from one senior economic official in Beijing uh, over hopes of new stimulus spending in the country. That sent the Shanghai Composite to a five-year high, up over 2%. Uh, a contrasting picture on the Nikkei, though, which closed down just point, minus 0.04%. All right, let's talk about uh, Egypt now. Uh, there's been a conference for international investors happening there. It wrapped up on Sunday. Yeah, that's right. And the total amount of contracts signed totaled $36 billion, according to Egypt's Prime Minister, during the three-day event. The majority of deals were in the energy sector, including major contracts with Siemens and General Electric. Now, Egypt's President al-Sisi said it was a vote of confidence in the country whose economy has been battered by four years of political unrest. Let's take a listen, though, to what some of the business people attending the meeting had to say about it. This conference specifically is really to encourage more investment to come to Egypt in order for us to be more stabilized and sustainable for the future. It will open the door for reconciliation to new investors that have problems with the government, and it puts a stop to the deadly bureaucracy that costs people so much. A quick look next to some of the day's other business stories. And as I was just saying, the Swiss concrete giant Hulsum says they can't accept the terms of a merger with their rival Lafarge in its current form. This after reports over the weekend that Hulsum wants to renegotiate terms of the deal, including the management of any potentially merged company. Lafarge, for its part, says it's ready to re-examine the share exchange portion of the deal, but not the other conditions. That deal, an estimated worth of $40 billion. There's more sign of tensions between unions and management at Air France. Workers' groups called off meetings planned for today to discuss the airline's five-year turnaround plan. The unions accused Air France boss, Air France KLM boss Alexandre de Juniac of compromising the talks by discussing them in the media. And a new study has found that China has overtaken Germany to become the world's third largest weapons exporter. The figures from the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute show a 143% increase in China's arms export in the past five years, the majority of the weapons being sold to other Asian countries. Right now, a story that will surely interest pretty much all of our viewers. We were talking about which language you speak, and uh, English, as we know, is really the language of business, isn't it, all around the world. Here in France, it's become even more important, despite efforts for people to keep boosting French. Yeah, that's right. This story coming at a very timely uh, time, because in France this week, there's a whole series of events to mark the significance of the French language, and Nicholas is going to talk about that more in the press review in a moment. Uh, but a survey from a recruitment website found that more than half of white-collar workers here in France say they're lack of English is holding back their career progression. It's led to a surge in employees seeking English lessons, lessons from their employer, as Kate Moody now explains. How are you? Yes. Parlez-vous anglais? Yes. For many French okay. workers, the answer is not enough. Comment on dit décalé en anglais? Décalé? Ouais. Postpone? Postpone, yes. P-O-S-T-P-O-N, je crois. Postpone. Okay. Can I postpone it uh, for tomorrow, maybe? Negotiating in English is a daily challenge in this ad agency where nearly all the clients are non-French speakers. It's not easy to come up with the right word in English immediately. English remains the gold standard for much of the international business community, but global rankings consistently rate the French as among Europe's least proficient speakers. More than half of white-collar workers in France say their poor level of written and spoken English is holding back their careers. That's why more and more French workers are flocking to English classes to expand their vocabulary as well as their professional opportunities. During a phone conversation, I've learned how to explain that a colleague is occupied. I know to say that he's not available, and I've learned this expression. The line is engaged. In many offices, the classes can even be conducted over the phone. Environmentally. Many more advanced speakers want to focus on their pronunciation and make sure they can close crucial deals.
What, what are the good news you can give me about this project? Even if I make mistakes, and I do make a lot of them, it's not a big deal. The important thing is to understand what the other person is saying. Just dive in and be as efficient as possible. Many French professionals say they want to improve their linguistic prowess. English lessons are the most requested workplace training in the country. And as we talk about poor spoken skills in English, I should point out I've regained my power of speech <laughs> and I'm now able to pronounce all of the words that I was expecting to. Excellent news. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, business editor Stephen Carroll, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.